it's in Asia or whatever, we can actually tailor our pitch to the cultural nuances of that particular um, that, that particular society. Uh, and you'd be surprised, you know, the same deal that you could offer to, uh, you know, to a company, if it's not framed the right way, there's no way it's going to get done. You know, but if you are able to finesse kind of the situation and actually learn uh, or a little bit about these cultures and, and therefore tailor your pitch that way, your likelihood of success is much higher. Um, and so it's been a huge asset to us to have a very diverse team, actually. Great, great. As a journalist, John, and actually getting word out to a very diverse audience. Does your writing style? Well, CNBC's audience. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm trying to, you know, just I, be I, inclusive. It's, it's I'm just trying to keep it real, though. Cause, yes, please do. You know. Please do. Does your writing style change, or, or how does it mix into to making sure you're reaching all all, all audiences? Well, um, let me hit, hit on a few things that kind of relate to the subject but don't touch directly there, just to give people a sense of, of how diversity has come into play for me across my career. I, I've only been in broadcast for about three years. I was in print before that and uh, moved to the Valley back in 99. Shortly after that, I did a, a piece for the Mercury News about diversity in high tech that informed a lot of the way that I thought about this, collected a lot of um, the EEO1 forms at the federal level uh, some from companies who didn't plan on having them released, to take a look at, uh, in tech, what diversity means. I found at the time, I think it was back in 2003, using, I think, 2000, 2001 data, uh, Asians were underrepresented in marketing and sales and at the top executive level. Uh, blacks and Latinos were underrepresented in engineering, well, everywhere, but especially in, in engineering. And I found over the, over the ensuing decades, interesting, um, a number of Asian entrepreneurs and uh, tech executives, tech workers, have done really well, just in my informal observation, um, at narrowing some of those gaps. Like uh, I see Shantanu Narayan at Adobe, uh, who had an executive position but wasn't CEO 10 years ago. Now he's CEO and pretty well tenured. Looks like he's going to be there for a while. You look across a number of uh, startups and, and some of the people heading those up, a lot more uh, younger Asians and Asian Americans are retaining CEO roles, whereas in the past they get pushed out for someone who more looks the part, as far as Sand Hill Road was concerned. Um, and, and, I, and I see that now that we're in more of a social media driven conversation, uh, from where I sit, diversity is even more important because before there were these sub-conversations and side-conversations that got had in private, you know, in people's homes, now they're happening on Twitter. And the mainstream media has to interpret them, and sometimes does a really poor job. So it, it becomes particularly important for brands, I think for agencies, uh, and for media companies to have the savvy internally to understand more of what uh, the audience is saying back to them, since this interactivity has mm -hmm. become uh, so important. And, and, and that, that sometimes means uh, hiring people who look like the audience, mm -hmm. but increasingly it doesn't just mean that. It means people who know how to reach out 